Welcome to this EduCast, Global Call Quality Remote Workers, sponsored by Versailles and Telecom Reseller. And with me today is Ross Williams, the Versailles Chief Success Officer, and I'm Gary Auden. And as we always do, we talk about our agenda. And we're really focusing on call quality, especially since we've had a lot more conferencing going on than we had even six months ago. How the quality has changed, quality improvements, visibility into looking at what's happening in your environment, measuring the customer experience, and discussing analytics and how it's done correctly. So let's start off with the first slide. You have a very large database of information about call quality. Would you provide some insights of what the database contains and how it is distributed across multiple industries? Well, the, the um, reason I took a look at this, Gary, was that during the pandemic, uh, when you know the um, globally the economic activity across countries and across business sectors um, seemed to drop away, but looking at our cloud platform, uh, which is gathering the statistics from our global customer base, we're looking and seeing our our peak global traffic actually increasing and increasing significantly, um, up to almost. Um, 200,000 simultaneous streams at that peak. And uh, so that was up 67% and our overall call volume was up 32%. So I'm sitting there thinking, why is this happening in a period of, of economic slowdown? So I took a look at the, um, the, the demographics uh, and the verticals of our uh, customer base. And you can see there we're split uh, between um, healthcare, finance and insurance, 13% uh, communications, information technology, and 12% and, uh, central and local government. So those businesses or those companies, organisations, were really at the epicentre of the um, response to the global pandemic. And that would explain why our traffic uh, statistics went up so much. Um, that was also followed with um, you know, increases across the board. So our active users are up. The number of reports that were run was up. The dashboards that were opened and running were up, you know, along with traffic. So everything, everything lifted from our perspective uh, with, that, you know, with the type of, of customers we have in, in the various verticals. Is that graph at the bottom of this page demonstrating that growth of traffic you saw? Uh, yes, it is. And, and this graph and, and the others on subsequent slides, they, they kind of centre around uh, the end of March. So we've kind of got a period of time there from uh, a three-month window that, that covers uh, most of that pandemic period, just sort of six weeks before the peak and, and six weeks after to see uh, exactly what was going on during that period, because it's, it's very, very interesting. What have been the effects of remote working since we started dealing with the COVID-19 epidemic? Would you interpret this graphic for us? And what is the scale on the bottom? So scale on the bottom similar. So we're centred there actually around the March 23rd, uh, which we <laughs> we discovered was the world's worst session quality day. So we had this perfect storm of across our base that massive increase in traffic, uh, up 67 at peak and 32% um, total. Um, so you had that huge spike in increased activity, yet you had the workers moving from enterprise and corporate environments and having to work from home during those lockdown periods. So you had this perfect storm of a massive increase of traffic and uh, at the, the end users moving to unmanaged networks, working from home, so working on the home Wi-Fi or um, even wide connections at home that are um, you know, not under the control of, of corporate or enterprise management and just don't work to the same standards. So. The consequence of that was there was a, a massive spike and, and a huge impact on, on quality. The quality of experience, um, as I say, the world's worst quality day was, was March 23rd. And believe it or not, you know, this is across a massive customer base, you know, across um, a base that generates around 600 million calls a month. Um, almost 70% of those interactions had some degree um, of bad quality, so some some um, something that affected them in, in quite a bad way, um, you know, even even for a brief period of time. But you know, something that, that got in the way of, of uh, clear communication between the parties. 
we continue talking about call quality, all right? Call quality improvement. Uh, according to this chart, a lot of traffic has a median opinion score of 3.6. What does that mean to those who are participating in the calls and collaboration sessions? Yeah, so a, a, a MOS score, or median opinion score um, of, of um, 3.6 or below, that really puts um, rates that the quality of that interaction is quite poor. So the end users would describe that as um, perhaps a distorted voice, a robotic voice, um, calls could drop out or disconnect unexpectedly. Um, two parties on a call, one could hear the other person and, and not the same in reverse. So the experience that people are getting is, is often asymmetrical. And that, you know, that kind of lines up with the way that, that home internet typically works for people too. So your, your download speed um, and your download bandwidth is typically much greater than your upload. And that's done um, traditionally because, you know, most of the consumption of, of media is from the internet uh, back into that home situation, not so much the other way. But of course, during the pandemic, um, you know, the transfer of data became much more symmetrical and it's running on a on a, you know, a network that's not really designed to support that. And you can see there, I mean, this red represents um, interactions or sessions that were just really below par. So the, the people would have really struggled to communicate um, that were experiencing that sort of, uh, that sort of MOZ. The mean opinion score 4.0 or better is what we like to have. What is this graph at the bottom of the slide demonstrating to us? So what it did, I mean, um, you saw the red, between these two different slides, you saw the red um, ramp down and the amber has ramped up. So what this proved to us over the period of the pandemic with all of these um, struggles, you know, the increased traffic and the, and the um, remote workers, it proved to us that our customer base was able to tune their environments because we saw the, the red sessions, the ones that were really bad, um, they dropped away and they've been replaced with sessions that were amber, so satisfactory. So these these ones represented here uh, are not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but they are, they are quite usable. So this has demonstrated to us that it's possible um, through tuning your environment, uh, making, making the configuration changes to adapt from that enterprise working to a home working environment you know, and to, and to get good results. I mean, it's, it's absolutely spelled out here by the numbers. There have been traditional ways to improve call quality. What have those been and why are they limited in scope? The, the, the challenge that most people have, and, and the listeners may be able to relate to this, is that you can have um, tools, if you like, or traditional IT tools, or maybe even um, specialist UC tools. The problem with most of them is they still require technical people to be involved. And, and usually, um, you know, within an organisation, there might be one or, or maybe two technical people that are capable of um, using those tools and digging around and, and um, you know, sometimes coming up with the right answer, sometimes coming up with the wrong answer, as, as, as illustrated there. Uh, but it is, it is very manual. Um, you're doing sort of one thing at a time. There's, there's huge, um, you know, logs to look through. There's you know a lot of a lot more um, problem solving to go rather than you know uh, being led directly to the to the answers. So yeah, one or two extremely technical people within an organisation still required to troubleshoot these scenarios and to do it one at a time, sort of in, in a serial fashion. You know, that's that's kind of the old way. Does this introduce bias and errors as well? Oh, absolutely, Gary. There's there's natural human bias. Uh, we we all have it all. Uh, we all have our biases, and and what you get in these situations is the um, the UC teams or the voice teams have a natural inclination to blame the network. Um, you know, their their applications that you know often have a a, a deep legacy um, in TDM and and ran on um, distinctly different networks in the past work, worked fine. But as soon as they're put into that um, IP network, where um, the network is essentially not real time, uh, packets can be lost. It, it's um, it, it's a completely different environment. Um, the UC teams will naturally tend 
to lean towards blaming the network. And it's precisely the same in the other direction. So that the data network guys um, don't really have the, the visibility of the full stack, but what they do see from their network is, is, the, is that it's working perfectly. And the data network guys tend to blame the application. So you get a bit of finger pointing going on. You're advancing a better call quality visibility view. Would you go into that for us? Right, well, the, the new way, so the way that um, VSM or Visage Service Management works, um, takes that, that cloud approach and big data approach and we overlay uh, machine learning and um, artificial intelligence. So we take what the best engineers um, are doing, you know, the old way, the manual way of doing this. Uh, we take that and we apply those processes, we automate them to start with, and then we apply them to every single scenario. So we're not just troubleshooting uh, poor scenarios. And because we take a service management approach, um, we dig deeper. So through through automation, we understand uh, the configuration of all of the um, elements that are involved uh, in, in, a, in a communication stream and a call. And when you look, take a step back and take a global view of that, you end up with a, a, a massive database, a massive repository of network performance, um, you know, jitter, packet loss, latency versus configuration, capacity, release. And when you multiply that up again, so we're looking at around 600 million streams every single month across an entire database. When you apply machine learning and artificial intelligence to that, the answers, you know, the reconfiguration that needs to be made, the answers lie simply lie within that data. So um, during the recent pandemic, as our customer base went through, ran the record numbers of reports and, and um, dashboards and things that they looked at, we can understand the effects of the changes that they made as a result. And therefore you can, you know, you can put that together and, and come up with recommendations based on, on global data. So in our view, this is the new way of doing it. And it's, it's simply taking that manual troubleshooting um, that was done by one or two technical people in the past and, and modernizing that and treating that, you know, the, the way we can in the new world through uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Customer experience is more than just measuring or monitoring the real-time control protocol or quality experience. Help us interpret what you mean by 370% and the other figures on this slide. This, this goes back to referencing our cloud environment, Gary, and, and during that um, time period, the number of reports across the board run by our um, user base was up by 370%. So there was, there was a massive increase. Uh, and we, when we look at the, those reports and break them down, um, the least that we got was it was more than doubling the number of activity and some of them are up almost two and a half thousand percent. So we're able to see um, how our users were, were using VSM to troubleshoot these situations. Um, and we're also able to see what they did because we understand the environments, we understand the changes that are made to them. And then we're able to see, as you've seen earlier in this presentation, we're able to see the results on that. And, and call quality improved significantly. So it went from um, almost 70% of sessions uh, in that MOZ band of, of below 3.6, and that moved up into um, a lot of those calls moved into the, into the um, good range, and some of them moved into the satisfactory range. So we can see absolutely that it's, po that it's possible to do this, it's possible to tune your environment, and in fact that you need to tune your environment when your workers um, move from being on the enterprise network to uh, working remotely. Unified communications and call centers need to deliver very high quality connections for the users and customers. Would you provide some information that your virtual engineer measures and reports? Um, this, this is a, a, um, the way we slice and dice the data because we've got such a huge amount of data. We're, we're talking about um, in, in excess of 12 billion different data points every month coming in from our customers environment. And, and, and that relates to you know, release, uh, capacity, configuration, um, you know, security, continuity, um, configuration, it's, it's all in the mix. And um, we also get a whole lot of information coming through and increasingly now from, from contact centres. So contact centres are, of course, um, really at the, the centre of the epicentre. Um, you, you know, when you're a, 
you need to call a supplier or a, a, a vendor. The um, a voice call is, the, is, is really essential if it's a complex interaction. You know, you can't um, fall back and, and just use, um, you know, um, chatbots or, or just text messaging to contact. You know, if you've got an insurance claim, for example, you know, that's a, a complex interaction, uh, you need to pick up the, the phone and call someone. So we've had an increased um, focus on contact centres and getting all the contact centre uh, configuration and, and metrics through. So we're now able to produce um, call quality statistics based on, you know, individual um, agents, individual queues or skills within a contact centre. We're able to overlay that complete caller experience along with the, the caller's journey. So as they progress through the through the contact centre, maybe spoken to one or two different agents. Um, maybe maybe initially they've been um, they've done some sort of pre-validation within an IVR before going to an agent. We can track all that through um, cradle to grave now uh, with with the quality of experience overlaid on the top of that. Alex is your virtual engineer. This is his dashboard. Would you interpret the dashboard for us? Yes, this is a, a great example of, of that automation, um, machine learning um, and AI. So that top panel there where the blue arrow is, um, that's, that's pointing to a, uh, a real-time um, stream, so using real-time um, protocol. And what we see there is we've pointed out that there's a, um, a, an issue with that stream. So that stream has poor quality based on all of the data we've, we've mined across our entire database and, and the performance of the network, and we lay that across together and look at it, we're able to pick up the pattern um, that relates to that. So when we see that type of network performance uh, with that type of configuration, the fact that DSCP um, has a value of zero, that's the likely cause of poor quality in this instance. And this is just you know, really drilled down into the detail. This is just looking at one particular stream. So that um, level of expertise that engineers used to have to troubleshoot a situation like this, uh, that's all been fully automated. All, all the heavy lifting, lifting is done for you, and it just points out, uh, points out the issue. You've added more to this dashboard on the lower right. What does that represent now? Yeah, so this is another way of, of looking at the data, um, and it goes to that bias that we discussed um, where you can turn around and say, the UC guys will turn around and say, well, it's network. Well, what we've done here is we're showing the network. Uh, we're showing every layer three device, so every layer three switch or router, and um, how that goes against the volumes of poor uh, quality. So you've got poor quality session, um, and that's shown by the, the amber and, and red stripes on that. And you can see across all of the layer three devices, across all the routers, the, the poor quality kind of exists almost equally on all of them in terms of a percentage. So th that indicates there's actually nothing wrong with the network. There's not one network component that's, you know, that's, that's causing an issue. Um, if it was, it would be you know, bright red or there'd be a lot of amber on it. Uh, but in this case, you can see that it's not. I mean, that there is poor quality in this example environment, but it's not the network that's causing it. People love the term deeper dive. You're taking us into a deeper dive of what your customers can see about the behavior of their environment. What do you learn from this deeper dive? Yeah, so in this, this example, um, we've gone, and it's actually the same um, dashboard, it's just a different tab um, pushed on it. We've, we've um, jumped down and looking at the codec. So, you know, we're looking really deeply within, uh, within the stream at, at very deep settings. And, and of course, these are completely invisible to traditional IT tools. Um, and you can see there that when the codec uh, is in the call is a G711A type codec, that's causing poor quality. So that's when you've got that combination of jitter packet loss latency. You know, and some of these things, you know, for example, on a home network, there's probably nothing you can do about that because they're they're unmanaged and, and the internet is unmanaged. Um, you can see here that if you in this environment, if they simply change the codec away from 711A, um, even though they make it 711 uh, MU law or, or 729, um, you know, if they change the codec, they're going to get a resolution to this problem. And that's, that's a great example of, of just tuning that configuration to something that suits the new remote working. 
changing numbers into graphics does make a difference. What do these graphics mean and why did you add the graphics to the dashboard? Yeah, so this one, this particular one here is, um, it demonstrates our, our global data. So I know customers and, and particularly contact centers like to benchmark themselves. So what we've done across our entire customer base is we anonymize the data and then we show individual customers where they sit in, in terms of being um, world class. And this is just an example. So we do that in a number of different ways, but this example is um, relating specifically back to voice quality. So, you know, even during the period of the pandemic, if you wanted to be um, providing a world class service, you needed your uh, media streams to be 1% uh, or less of those media streams to have any sort of negative impact from a quality perspective. And this particular environment, we're showing, demonstrating to the customer that they are pretty close to world class. Um, there's only 1.2% of their streams have uh, have negative quality. And when you break down the pie chart, you can see from the, the amount of amber there, that the, you know even within that 1.2, uh, more than half of that 1.2 is still in the satisfactory range. So, um, you know, they can, they can be pretty pleased with their performance. Alex is your virtual engineer. And for those interested, these are two URLs that you can access to learn more about what Alex does. For information about Versailles itself, you have the two uh, sites available plus their phone numbers. Well, thank you very much, Ross. It's been another enlightening Educast in our series. Thank you again. Well, thanks for your time, Gary. It's, it's always a pleasure.